I do want to talk to you about what I believe, I think a lot of us would agree, was probably the most difficult day. And that was finding out what happened to JJ and Tylee. Um, seeing those images of them and understanding how they died, I can imagine that was an incredibly difficult day. What was that day like for you? Oh, boy. Um, I We had already seen, you know, JJ, everything beforehand. We'd already seen some pictures of JJ's burial, um, him being, you know, uh, unearthed, you know, with the um, – whatever that team is, the evidence recovery team. So I personally didn't think that we would have to go through the autopsy pictures, you know, cause it was pretty much the same pictures except, um, just removal of the tape and the, the bag and whatnot. But, um, that was the hardest day for me. I, I couldn't even, I mean, I just cried. I tried to hide my tears a lot cause I know we weren't supposed to show emotion and, yeah, it, it was incredibly disturbing that somebody would do that to um, two kids. I, and and I would come home to my teenage daughter and just cry, you know, and she would just hold me and give me a hug. And there was one day I saw um, a kid like walking in the grocery store, you know, with his pajamas on and his like his bare feet. And I just came home and I just cried. That, like how somebody could do something just you know the children like that just it's pure evil it really is um and you know i i always said this because i was uh, and i was following the case i said i just i felt really bad for you guys because you shouldn't have to see that and and you know jury service and jury duty is just incredibly hard as is but to see that, I really, really felt bad for all of you um, that you were exposed to that that level of detail and had to witness that. And I'm sorry that you had to see that. Um, and I just I, I know that must have been incredibly difficult. We had our reporters who were talking about how difficult it was for them. Um, when you were watching that, did you get angry? Did you did did you feel like you wanted justice for the children? Um, because I mean, it's hard to separate it. it, it everybody's human. Seeing that. You, you get angry, I would. I mean, of course, you know, any normal human being or parents, I mean, most of us on the jury were parents. I mean, you would be just evil inside if you didn't have any kind of um, emotion or reaction to that. You know, you want to give them justice. Those kids need justice to what happened to them and because they no longer can speak for themselves. And you know, I think somebody needed to, and Lori in particular, um, needed to um, be held responsible for it. How do you think Lori perceived her children at the end of the day? Because she at one point was seemingly a loving mother, and then this. I mean, wh wh what do you think she thought of them? How do you think she justified this? I... I have no, I mean, I have zero answer for that. I really don't. I don't know how any parent could justify um, encouraging somebody um, to murder their child, encouraging somebody to, there's a, you know, evil spirit in them that must be get, gotten rid of. Um, how somebody, a, a parent could n I lie to numerous people about where your kids are while you're off enjoying, you know, multiple vacations in Hawaii. It's just, it's not what a normal parent would do. Do you think that it was all about the money? It was all about her relationship with Chad? Or do you think that it was something more? I think it was just a storm, a whirlwind of things um, just collided in October 2018 when they got together that um, it was part religious belief that they um, thought that, that they were higher powers, that they were going to be the last people standing on this earth. Um, that was one aspect of it. And I do honestly believe that money um, had a lot to do with it as well, because I'm sure as you heard during the trial that there was numerous people who would have taken the kids. Yep. Um, you know, if she had problems with them, if she thought where they were evil spirits or they were, you know, JJ had special needs.
and it was incredibly hard for her, then she had numerous people that she could have asked to take the kids. And that's where I do feel that the financial gain came into play. That she it, knew that if the kids went somewhere else, that the money would follow them. It's it's such a it's such a tragedy that aspect because they could have lived. They Chad and her could have you know moved on and and started a life. That's one of the heartbreaking aspects of it. I wanted to ask you. We have, I know we have a couple minutes left. Um, so much evidence was presented about Charles Vallow. You and the rest of the jury were not tasked with deciding whether or not she was involved in his murder. I don't know if you know this, but Lori Vallow is charged. With, Char- with the conspiracy to commit the murder of Charles Vallow out in Arizona, based on what was presented in this courtroom, do you think that she plotted to kill Charles Vallow? Oh, boy, that's a hard question for me to answer because I didn't have all the evidence um, to that case. And I, and I don't know the legalities of them being able to tell us what happened in Arizona because I do feel like we got bits and pieces of it, but not the full story so that would be hard for me to um be able to make any judgment on that's fair let me ask you this if alex cox and chad daybell were also being tried um at in your courtroom and you had to decide whether or not they were responsible they were guilty of the murders of the kids and tammy daybell based on what was presented to you do you think that you would have had enough evidence to convict I, Alex Cox and Chad Daybell. Oh, yes. They were all three um, working together. I mean, it, and it's unfortunate, Alex, that I feel like the, he was the pawn. And even in the message, or when he talked to Zul- Zulima Pastenas, that he was the fall guy. I, I honestly that believe that they manipulated him so much that he um, did anything that they said. And he was a warrior for, war- for Lori. And... Yeah, but unfortunately, just being manipulated by somebody doesn't get you off the hook. So I, I do believe, honestly, that th- all three of them would be found guilty. You, um, you mentioned that in the middle of the trial, um, you were feeling that you would vote in favor of guilt. How did you? You said you were feeling the most of the jurors were feeling that same way. H- how did you know that? It, it, was it just a feeling from them? Were there any sort of conversations? Well, it's been conversations that we've had after. Um, but during that time, yeah, I mean, we weren't allowed to say anything to each other. And we didn't. We actually were uh, went to our room and we ate all that food and we didn't say anything to each other. But I could get the feeling that a lot of us felt the same way, you know? Yeah. You, uh, were you I incredibly... Mean, the emotions on the jury, you know, just, I mean, I could see other jurors crying and... So just the emotions are in just their facial expressions. I can see that, you know, they also probably maybe felt the same way that I did. Were you disappointed that you weren't part of the uh, jury deliberation process? I was, I mean, I knew in the beginning that there was going to be six alternates. Um, I do feel that I, you know, I didn't get my say, but I do feel that my fellow jurors um, deliberated how I would have deliberated um, and, 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 um, come up with the not, uh, the guilty verdicts as well. So I do feel like that. Not my, not that my voice was heard, but I do feel like a majority of us thought the same way. And um, yeah, I mean, it came out in the verdict that I would have come out with. So and, it was tip- disappointing. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, no, I can imagine you sit through the whole trial and then you don't even get to decide uh, one way or another. Um, but, you know, I appreciate you letting us know which way you were leaning and, and where you were going to go.